Are you looking for a CPU cooler for your PC without overspending? Well, hold on to your seats because we're about to dive into something great. Allow me to introduce the Freezer 36, Arctic Cooling's latest CPU tower cooler delivering exceptional performance without breaking the bank. And get this, it costs less than $30. Today, I'll give you a quick unboxing, show you installation on both AMD and Intel motherboards, and we even put it through rigorous thermal and noise testing. And the results may surprise you. So get comfy and join us as we dive into Arctic's newest CPU tower cooler. The Freezer 36 is the successor to Arctic's already popular Freezer 35 and Freezer 34 eSports duo. Now it comes with a powerful dual fan setup in a push-pull configuration, ensuring excellent heat dissipation. The Freezer 36 comes in four models. Well, it actually comes in five. All models come with four copper heat pipes, two 120 millimeter high static pressure PWM controlled fans, an aluminum plate covering the heat sink, and complete AMD and Intel motherboard support. They even promised future compatibility with Intel's upcoming Arrow Lake LGA1851 series sockets. The base Freezer 36 with an unpainted heat sink is currently selling for $25.40 over on Amazon. The completely blacked out model comes in at $28.48. Now, if you want to add RGB, you're looking at $33.10 for the Freezer 36 ARGB in black and $33.87 if you'd rather have it in white. Such odd pricing numbers, but that's what they are currently. I'll leave links in the description for you to check out current pricing or pick one up for yourself. The reason I said four instead of five is there's kind of a bonus model that I can't find for sale anywhere, but it is listed on Arctic's website. It's the Freezer 36 CO, which is equipped with fans using double ball bearings. This makes them more durable and resistant to external forces such as heat, dust, and vibrations. This version is the ideal choice for 24-7 operation. The Freezer 36 undergoes serious long-term testing, which ensures their products offer quality and durability, and they back this with an impressive six-year warranty. Why don't we go ahead and get this thing unboxed? Don't forget to peel the contact surface protective sticker off, or you're going to have a bad day. This cooler comes with two fans, but I'll look at them in a sec. The heat sink has a beautiful satin finish and has these quick snap mounting points for fan mounting. There are two spring-loaded captive screws with a tension bar used to secure the cooler onto both Intel and AMD-style motherboards. The only plastic bag in the box includes the mounting hardware, which gives you four gray risers and screws with two mounting brackets for AMD, or for Intel, four mounting screws used with Arctic's custom contact frame. This is installed using an included hex key screwdriver, as you'll see later in the video. There's a black circle sticker that's got Arctic's logo in the bag as well. I think it's in case you decide to turn the fans around and mount them backwards since the logo isn't displayed on the fan bracket side. There's also a small tube of Arctic's very own MX6 thermal paste. The fans are packaged in nice cardboard sleeves and are 120 millimeter ARGB and PWM controlled. They've got daisy chainable cables, which means you can plug multiple fans together, taking up less plugs on your motherboard. The fans also have pre-installed screws already oriented in the correct position for easy installation onto the CPU cooler. Are you wondering how this works? Then let's jump over to installation and I'll show you. I'm going to start with Intel since I'm using AMD for my test system. The first thing that needs to be done is removal of the stock Intel retention clip system. Arctic provided a hex type screwdriver to remove the brackets. Don't forget to open the lever arm to release spring tension. Once the screws are loose, just lift it away. Be careful not to damage the pins on the way out, as everything is now exposed. Now you can install the CPU since Arctic's contact frame will hold down the processor. You'll reuse the Intel backplate by screwing the bracket into it. Place the frame onto the motherboard with the indented triangle located on the frame in the same corner as the gold CPU triangle. Use the four short thread included screws for securing the bracket. I tightened in a crisscross pattern, snugging all four screws. Don't over tighten them as you could risk damaging the board. Place the cooler down onto the retention bracket and tighten the two captive screws a few turns on each until they stop. Remember how I said the fans have easy installation onto the cooler? Both fans snap into place using a screw and clip system. 
This is much better than those annoying metal clips most companies use for this. All that remains is plugging everything in. Connect both fans RGB cables and then connect them to the five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard. The last connection is the PWM connectors, which work in the exact same way. Connect them together and then to the CPU fan header. Hide all your cables under the CPU cooler for that ultra clean look and you're done. The AMD installation is a little bit more standard. Start by removing the AMD mounting brackets by loosening the four screws and lifting them away. Then place the four gray plastic risers onto the stock AMD backplate. Place the straight metal brackets included in your hardware bag angled outward and secure with the four full thread screws and tighten. The rest of the installation is basically the same as with Intel. Lower the cooler down onto your motherboard and tighten the captive screws back and forth until they stop. Then press each fan onto the quick snaps and they will lock in place. Connect your RGB headers together and onto the five volt addressable motherboard header as well as the PWM fan cables. They'll connect to your motherboard CPU fan header. Hide the cables away under the CPU cooler and once again, you're all done. Now I'm sure you're wondering how well this thing performs for $25. Let's talk about that. The test bench that I went with is a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D CPU. I've got 32 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z5 Neo clocked at 6,000 megahertz, an MSI B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard, and an EVGA RTX 3060 Ti for the Win 3 Ultra graphics card. It's listed in the description in case you didn't catch all that. Now let's look at the Freezer 36's competition. I wanted to pair it up with a similar style cooler, and of course, I needed a control too. I used the Deepcool AK400 Digital for comparison, and AMD's own Wraith Prism for our control cooler. Now, I decided to throw in an all-in-one liquid cooler just to see how far away the air coolers were in performance. For this, I went with the Fractal Design Lumen S36. I ran three different tests. As usual, started with Cinebench R23 to push as much demand at the CPU as possible. Then I switched over to Blender, which is a little less intensive, but still creates quite a bit of heat. And finally, I wrapped it up with Unigen Heaven, which simulates a gaming workload. The temperatures that you see are the highest numbers observed. As you can see, the Freezer 36 is a nice upgrade over something like AMD's Prism. It was also much quieter, by the way. And it comes in just shy of the AK400, which costs about $10 more. I ended up using the digital version, which is even more expensive than that. I was very impressed with both tower cooler options besting performance of the 360 millimeter liquid cooler. This trend continues into the blender testing as the Freezer 36 sees the best temperatures yet, even if it's only by one degree. Now Unigen Heaven saw excellent temperatures across all cooling options, so it really comes down to noise. I cannot believe how quiet these fans are, even under full load. Now I know my thermal and noise testing is nothing scientific, as I'm not really equipped to perform anything spectacular, but I was impressed with the 36's silent operation. Circling all the way back to the beginning, the Arctic Freezer 36 did not disappoint. It performed great, and with an entry price of just $25, I'm sold. If you're looking for a solid CPU tower cooler, but don't want to spend a bunch of money, the Freezer 36 will fit perfectly. The Intel contact frame is a nice bonus too. It was easy to install, and I think it's smart they include this after all the pressure issues with the stock Intel retention system. I wasn't too happy with the fact that I had to use digital instructions for installation though. I prefer paper ones. This cooler is an awesome product that performed really well in thermal testing and operated at a near silent noise level. I'd say this is a good choice for an upgrade over something like AMD's stock cooler, or if you want to save a little bit of money over a more expensive option. As impressive as this cooler was, I was more impressed with AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Even with the Wraith Prism cooler, temps were totally manageable. Between the performance of this chip and the recent price drop, I think Intel has a tough battle ahead fighting for the gaming crown. If you enjoyed today's video and you stayed all the way to the end, thank you very much. Maybe you'll consider subscribing and coming back for more tech-related content because these types of detailed videos are exactly what you'll find here. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Cause I could do, I could do